Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're going to do Out uh, by Awa Upshot 105. Um, I heard of the studio. I didn't know what it was. I just got a couple of comments. I got the whole complete set till five. Uh, so I looked it up what Awa means. I mean, if I just say it, it just sounds a little bit weird, but it's... Uh, the, the word they use is artists, writers, and artisans. And it seems there are a couple of ex-Marvel guys and also some people in the creative team like uh, Michael Straczynski and Frank Cho. Uh, those are uh, yeah, big names. Um, so they're involved too. Not sure if they are part of the company, but I guess so. Not sure. But uh, yeah, I got this, um, you know, the set and, um, you know, uh, what intrigues me is, uh, you know, the whole setting. It's in setting in is World War II. Uh, we have Nazis, we have soldiers, we have whatever it is, is probably a creature or a vampire. Um, but uh, so I like this, uh, this cover, but at the same time, it also gives a lot away because you know exactly what's in it, right? So the whole suspense about what they are finding here is right out of the gate. I mean, it's, it's here. That's what you see. You know, I love that it's in a castle, we saw skulls and some soldiers, etc. Uh, so without further ado, let's uh, let's dive in. We go to um, winter 1944 in Czechoslovakia, border. And there's people who are digging and they find a chest. And um, But these people think that they are getting released. Of course, that's not the case because Nazis are do what Nazis do. Uh, and they shoot them and, uh, and the blood spills all over that chest. And they are dead. So Germans get, get the uh, get the coffin or the chest with weird runes and symbols. They go back and then they all talk to this guy who sits all alone and um, said, hey, why, why are you uh, getting the, the, the space treatment? Well, it seems that, well, according to this, he's a traitor uh, because he speaks German. I mean, he thinks that he's a traitor. But the other, um, you know, prisoner, POWs, says he's a, a co-talker, a, a Comanche, more like a translator. and um, But not that he is really a traitor, but in, in his you know team or soldiers, that, that's what he did. And, and he's being captured like everybody else. So there's Americans here, uh, Czechoslovakians, uh, people from Welch also, because they are driving a, you know, a very small cliff. And um, this guy is, is, is you know, uh, afraid, wants to jump out and, and speaking in a weird language and, and, and you know, this guy, he's speaking German, I told you, they are spies and so um, the, the Comanche guy says no, no, let me talk to him, I can speak a little bit Welsh, I will calm him down and um, that's exactly what he did and he introduces himself like uh, that he is Nokona from Oklahoma and then um, in the meantime, because the, the the reason that he wants to come and now these Germans are getting a little antsy because of the panic, what's happening, and they want to, uh, if they're not going to sit down, they're going to shoot them. Um, so they drive into this castle, and it's a prison of war camp, and I must say right off the bat, the art looks freaking amazing. Uh, it's done by Will Conrad, and I know that name from somewhere, but I forgot to look that up. Um, I believe he did some work, but I can't remember. Um, so if you want to know who these people are, well, here it is. Uh, you can kind of look it up for yourselves. Um, also, going a little bit, uh, a little bit back to the cover or to the logo, it says "Awa," you know, artists, writers, statisticians, and upshot. So I tried to look that up too because I didn't know what it was, and it, it sounds really uh, weird to say, "Hey, I, I got an Awa upshot comic," but I think, but I cannot say that with hundred um, percent. I lost my train of thought. I cannot say uh, for sure what it is, uh, but I think this is a maybe a line from Awa, you know, like what Marvel is doing and DC with, you know, the black label. I could be wrong again, but I'm not sure. Maybe it's just Awa upshot. Maybe. Anyway, so they are entering in um, Okona. What's his name? Let me double check because I forgot again. Um, in Okona sees the uh, the chest and he sees the symbol, but he cannot figure it out what it is and uh, it makes him curious. So uh, the people are you know, getting unloaded from the trucks and they are their quote-unquote new home and there are soldiers speaking down to them and he says, 
That's right, British and Americans, death is above you. Always, never forget. Basically, they're saying you have to uh, be careful or we're going to shoot you. And then uh, this soldier, we don't see his face much, but he also tips his hat. And then we see it here, and we see it here. And he also did it, I believe, if I'm not really... Well, not here tipping, but you don't see his face much. So maybe that's a thing, or maybe later on. So what they notice is that um, they're building crosses, and they think that's odd. So they're getting, you know, uh, shouted out by, uh, by a group of people. It says, attention, and these people who are prisoners here for a very long time, uh, speaking to them, and basically they are very happy to see them. And they're introducing themselves. Now, um, so my first thought is, well, these people are working for the Germans, but that's not the case. They are uh, prisoners of war. But I believe there is some kind of ranking system there that, you know, not everybody's equal. There is, you know, generals and captains and sergeants, etc. Um, so they are welcoming these new people. Um, then we skip to uh, into the castle. When they, uh, and we see the coffin here, laying down into the bottom of the church or whatever it is here, or the castle. And um, the commander, uh, or Herr Commandant, says, um, say, are you confident uh, if it works? And I thought to myself, works what? And said, the dishes behind the religious symbols, the electricity, is it all in place? And then one of the... The German says, the scientist says his field will be turned on, yes. And then begin the ceremony first. And the other one, <laughs> that was my bad English and German impression. Although, my uh, German, I can speak pretty good German and I can read German and I can, you know, try, um, how do you say, uh, understand German very well. I live about, let's say, a half an hour from the border of Germany. Uh, so yeah, I, uh, my German is pretty good. <laughs> Not there's any German words in here, unfortunately. Otherwise, I can brag about it, but I can't. So <laughs> uh, anyway, um, they say, the prisoners, what do we tell them when it starts happening? And then the, the commander, the commandant says, I don't care. And then it's nighttime. Uh, well, it was nighttime before. So we go to the, to the barracks and everybody's, you know, looking for a place. And they, uh, one of these these people that greeted them before, that um, they are try to how do you say uh, escape, and it seems that this guy has been you know escaping camps before, and then he's digging tunnels, and they are almost there where they wanted to be, and that they are in luck because the escape will be, you know, um, they will escape soon. Um, but I think to myself, wait a minute, if you have done this before a couple of times. Why you are still in prison? Why do you getting caught? So you're not really good at your job. Maybe you're really good at escaping, but not, you know, Germans are gonna, gonna find you again. Uh, and he's still alive, that's, uh, that's okay. So then this guy is um, another one of the POWs who says, you are a Comanche, aren't you? I asked about you, I saw you when you came in. And then he stares at, um, at him and he says, um, I hope you don't mind staring. I've never seen someone like you before. Well, I can imagine. I mean, I believe this is a, a Czechoslovakian. Maybe he's German. I don't know. And I can imagine that in 1944, you have never seen a Comanche or an Indian guy before, or maybe a people from a different color, because that's not common in those places. And um, he shows them the location where they are going to escape. But then one of the... Um, POWs who is, you know, still ragging about the Nakona. Uh, he says, D don't you show him. He's a spy. And he immediately, uh, immediately attacks him. He's going to turn us all in and we get the firing squad. Fucking traitor. And then everybody says, stop that. Don't, don't do that. That's an order. And then Nakona is, is going out while the other ones are trying to, to you know, hold this, guard, this guy in place. And then um, Nakona sees something. I don't know, there's something out there and he hears something and he says who's there. And then, you know, this, this, uh, the, the escape guy prisoner, <laughs> I'm not sure what's his name, I forget, but it's not really important. Uh, he says, hey, are you all right? And, um, and don't worry, uh, we're going to figure it out and etc. 
And, he's, and Nakona says, well, I need some air. And uh, yeah, he says, yeah, it, it gets a little bit intense and claustrophobia, uh, etc. cetera. And, and, and people are being locked away for a very long time. So tensions are really getting high. And then he says, I don't you spoke Czech, Sergeant Dills. Okay, that's his name. And he says, Czech, what do you mean? And then it implies that he don't speak Czechs. But he heard something, and you see a little bit of a shadow here. And then this happens. And the last page we're going to see, oh man, look at this. This is gruesome. He rips him apart. I mean, look at this. Look at his hand. It's, it's, it rips claws up at his stomach. And well, he's, he's dead instantly, I guess. And look at all the blood flowing. I mean, from the looks of it, he reminds me a little bit of, oh man, I forgot. That from Malibu Comics, um, there was a vampire from another dimension. Oh God, why am I forgetting? But he was also pale. He was balding. He has some flapping hair. He has some weird teeth. Not you know like he was also a vampire. But he also sucks out energy. And he also at one time he um, got the Infinity Stones and he can teleport. He also tangled with Venom and other heroes. Oh man, why am I forgetting his name? Anyway, that's not really important right now. The important right now is that, well, he's in shock. This guy's dead. And there's a fucking vampire in town. Well, in a castle. And it brings us to the end of the video. And we go to the, the next I I issue. And uh, yeah, I'm, 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 yeah. Well, not so, so much impressed. It's more like, um, I like what I'm seeing. Um, look at this guy. He's gruesome. Um, is it good, this issue? Well, I don't know. I can... I mean, the, the setting is fun. Well, not for these prisoners, but you know what I mean. The setting is uh, 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 interesting for me because I like these settings. Uh, I like the horror aspect. Uh, I like it's cold, bleak, uh, no escape. And there is a... Well, they are trapped with this vampire. So... Uh, and this is an introduction, introductionary book. You know, it's issue number one, so it's more like a setup for what's to come. So overall, yeah, I give it a thumbs up. Uh, we see what happens in issue number two. Ganks, uh, ganks, ganks, guys. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye bye.